So today we're going to take a look at how Loud managed to use Harbour and uh, this game of Pearl here because it was probably one of the best Harbour performances we've seen. Not that that's a particularly high bar, but you know. Uh, let's dive into it and we'll start off here with round number three and in round number three uh, we got a harbor here who's going to solo hold a and this is the bonus round for loud here so they don't have great guns and you can see by gen g's look here that they are just going to blitz it down a and come straight to our harbor so let's take a look at it as uh, gen g yep sending a flash there's a little astro recall star right they start to come in very very fast and uh, toys you might just be able to catch it here sends in that cascade uh, uh, just across him, just uh, across the site just here, so, uh, you know, a cascade coming this way, and uh, ultimately, they do manage to get back in onto the site here, we get some nice uh, killjoy nano swarms here on Meteor as well, as he gets into a bit of trouble just there, they actually manage to go one for one, and we end up in a 4v4 here, where we do still manage to have Sadek, who's come back onto the site, and I really, really like this, where Toys managed to find a kill uh, there on the sky, and then puts up this little cascade here. Really, really nice little wall because this allows Sadak to either, you know, get out if he wants or allows our harbor to come back in, right? Or anyone threatened of rotating coming in onto the site as well. So it's just going to allow us to kind of, you know, be a threat on this site, you know, probably just focus on uh, someone coming from this angle rather than, you know, them threatening to really... Uh, maybe burst through this wall without a flash or anything like that. Unfortunately, Sadak does get spammed, but then uh, Toy spams back on Meteor, and he's now just able to live. And he's able to now send out this little wall just across the site just there that sections off uh, the two remaining Genji players. And this is one of the crucial things about Harbour on the defensive side, I think, which is positioning, right? And where you position yourself in terms of doing these defensive walls. Because there are going to be some angles, you know, in this game where it you're not going to be in a great position to do a wall. But when you're playing Harbour on this defense side, I think you need to understand where can I do easy walls from, right? Where is this going to be an easy position to do a wall from? And down here in the little uh, dugout section, right, this is an easy wall to do. You're not going to miss that wall, right? Or even if it's one where, you know, they aren't quite on the site yet. And so you do it a bit deeper, you know, maybe something like that. That, that again, is not really a wall that you're going to miss, right? This is pretty simple stuff, right? But when we're playing Harbour, it can be difficult. I'm sure any of you who've played him know to get these walls right all the time. So we need to find positions on maps where it's going to be somewhat easy to do those walls, right? Where it's just going to be a straight line or, you know, maybe just one curve, right? We don't want to have to do some crazy wall to, you know, have it be perfect to one up. So that's one thing when playing Harbour that we need to understand. And uh, Toys, you know, I think consistently, you know, was put in positions where it's going to be somewhat easy. Now, they just try and buy time here loud because Aspas is on this flank, right? And, and he's kind of the one that's potentially going to win the round for them. But I like what Gen G do here, right? They know that this Harbour is here. So they just go, okay, well, I'm just going to smoke that off and I'm just going to come and destroy you. They get the trade there as well. We end up in a 1v1 and uh, Aspas uh, dashes away there and unfortunately for King, who ultimately had an insane game uh, in this uh, series against Loud, but uh, unfortunately he's playing against one of the best players in the world here in this 1v1 uh, and ultimately Aspas wins it and Loud win their bonus. And now let's come to the very next round. And again, Genji are pretty much going to do the exact same thing. They're just going to go, you know, for a very another fast A hit. You can see they're all grouped up together here. But a harbor is in a bit of a different position this time. But again, this is going to be a position from which you can do a harbor wall very, very easy. You know, where you're not going to miss it, right, as you see. So, Genji, they start to come in, you know, do the exact same stuff as they were doing before. They manage to, you know, push them back. And they start to come towards this A site. Aspas does get that kill, but we're about to get a harbor wall that's been done from just here. And you can see, again, like, you're not going to miss this wall, right? This is going to be very, very simple stuff. Like, it's going to hit from this position. And, uh, you know, again, it's just putting yourself into a position where, yeah, you're not going to miss. And Aspas just starts cleaning up on the site. And it's, you know, all very good. And, and yeah, they... Yeah, this is There's just against the save, so it's not you know, the craziest thing in the world. They end up in this 5v2, and then as this wall drops, you're going to see, again, we get some good use of the harbor as the sky dog there sees where TS is. As this wall starts to go down, we're going to get this cascade in just a second, just there. And now this allows our sky to push up with this cascade and isolate this angle on TS and get uh, this uh, this kill on him just there. And then ultimately, they're going to find this last kill as well as we flash around the corner. We get a trade, and Loud again managed to win this round. But now let's go to the attacking side and let's start with round number 16 and this was a crucial round 
Louder down 9-6. This is the first full gun round for both sides. The economy is in a bit of a vulnerable position for both sides. And so this round really swung the game. And we're going to get probably the best use of harbor that they had all game here from Loud. Because they're going to come in towards mid just here. And we're about to see a really, really good harbor wall, as you will see. So this wall is going to go across just like that, right? And they're about to get this kill here on TS in art. Uh, just in a second, there's the kill. But this wall, let's talk about this wall because it does a lot, right? And this, I think, if you're going to play Harbor on a map at like the pro level, you need a wall like this that you can consistently do because you can threaten a lot with this wall, right? You're threatening this, you're threatening this, you're threatening this. I mean, you're potentially threatening that as well, right? You're threatening a lot. And what you're going to see is actually after they get this kill here or not, pretty much all of Gen G are going to come and look towards mid, right? They're all going to look towards it. But because of this wall, they have no idea what Loud are doing. And they use this to their great benefit here, Loud, you'll see. As the sky starts to back off just here, sends a slash around that corner uh, and eventually backs off just there. You see we get our KO and Viper walking up here. Our jet is behind this wall as well. So now they just have no idea where Loud are, right? Just no idea. And Loud are going to use this wall because they send in the dog past this wall just there right and you can see a cascade comes down there as well this sky starts to rotate but these two obviously can't tell if they're actually going this way right so this sky is in a bit of a bind here right where it's like i don't know what's going on and you know you're in a bit of a a weird pickle here for this guy all from just one bit of utility right all from just one bit of utility and so what happens is this wall is going to drop but they send a cascade down here they send the dog down here they send a flash down here as well and all of that has given them the time to just sneak through Right, so they send in a lot of pressure this way with the cascade, with the dog, with the with the flash, and all that time they've just been walking this way instead. But there was never any vision here for Gen G, you know, because of just one harbor wall, and that was what was so great about this. It's just one bit of utility, but it was used so well to create, you know, just block off so many lines of sights with just one bit of utility. This is what we need to do if we're playing harbor. They send in the cascade here towards dugout, as you can see. The Kalanzine goes kind of massive here by finding that kill because he's in a real. You know, not a great position and eventually he does pay for it but we get the kill drill lockdown on this on the spike they managed to find this kill here on meteor and now with the kill drill lockdown and the pushing them back right and they have you know some pretty good agents for this in, in terms of stalling right you got a viper you got a killjoy here as well so you know in terms of the stall louder in a pretty good position and you'll see that they ultimately uh, will manage to make this work loud but you saw just from that one harbor wall right they, they just created a lot of confusion genji didn't know which way they were going and i think if you are going to play harbor you know you need that kind of wall right you need that kind of like just one wall that does a lot. I think that that was kind of the dream of Harbor, right? That this wall is going to be really flexible and there's going to be ways of using it, uh, you know, that are going to be quite creative and cool. And it potentially can block off a lot of lines of sight. And you need that kind of thing, I think, if you're going to get maximum value out of Harbor. And now let's come to round number 18. And you're going to see something similar here, but maybe also a bit of the clunkiness of Harbor. This round is going to start off with Meteor actually finding this kill on Sadak just there. And so uh, they actually lose the first uh, the first kill. And uh, a KO knife came in uh, up here as well. So, you know, we're pretty sure that there's been at least two people just there. We're going to see a similar wall to the oh, one that we saw in that last round, uh, you less. know, coming and down here in mid from this position. But you're going to see we just probably slightly missed this one a bit, right? This isn't going to be the easiest wall to do. You know, it's kind of tailed off just here. And so this sky still has this line of sight. Um, and also what you're going to see is from King's perspective here is he can still see if people come uh, down here, uh, you know, and he can still see through this doorway. So, you know, he knows if they come here, whereas the one before did come like this. So they had they didn't know if someone crossed across. Right. Uh, so we do slightly miss the wall. And again, you see part of that clunkiness of harbor, but it still does enough to where, you know, we're still going to hold King in possession. We, you know, are pretty sure there's two people down there with an op. So they're just going to go for this fast A hit instead. Right, they're just going to send it down A instead. Uh, pretty quick here, Loud. They start spamming the box. They send in the dog. Uh, it gets shot just there. And now we're going to send in the harbor ult. And in we come. Right, we're just going to go in. Aspaz actually maybe gets a bit easy not to die there. Cascade comes across again towards dugout just there. The problem is, though, and again, we talk about this clunkiness, is obviously we've you know sent in this cascade. We've sent in this uh, the first wall that was coming through mid, right? But we don't have anything for this, right? Uh, we do still have a cascade. So maybe it was possible that, you know, we could have sent a cascade, you know, in here. But maybe in, you know, the heat of the moment, we're trying to chase kills with this harbor and whatnot. Uh, you know, we can't find the time to actually, you know, do that. 
But ultimately, what that means is, you know, Meteor gets a chance at killing Aspas. And if Meteor hits this shot, Genji probably win this round. And Meteor's good enough to hit that shot, right? So Aspas eventually has to use a Jet Smoke in there instead. And uh, we do manage to get the spike down, but we end up in a 5v4. And uh, what you're going to see here is we send in the Cove just there as well, which is great, right? It stops the up coming from that angle. Genji just, you know, decide to send it now, though, right? With the with the KO ult and with the, with the dog coming out as well. They destroy that Cove just there. And uh, they're in a pretty good spot. Aspas somehow manages to get that kill and get out. I have no idea. I mean, Aspas's ability to get out of situations was unbelievable. Genji do manage to uh, res the, the KO there, and uh, they are going to make make this a 5v2 after getting that kill just there. The Seekers do come out, and Kauzi's about to go massive with these flashes just there. As you see, he gets one. He gets two. He sends out another flash. We end up here in this 3v2, but they end up spraying it down. They kind of line up there for toys at the end. And uh, he manages to win the round. And Loud would go on to win this map and ultimately the game. And yeah, they used Harbor, I think, in some interesting ways. I think they found more value from Harbor than, you know, most teams. I think I was impressed with, like, you know, they kept putting their Harbor on the defensive side in easy positions, right, where it was difficult to mess up a wall or get it wrong. Uh, and that, I think, is important. And uh, they did pretty well. And ultimately, they won the game.